Before his death in 1980, at the young age of 33, Bon Scott was the lead singer of legendary rock and roll group ACDC. After Bon's death, the band went on to achieve more success than ever. Though fans have always thought that their next album, Back in Black, was created without Bond's involvement, there is evidence suggesting that the singer contributed lyrics to the album before his passing. Other secrets not commonly known about Bon Scott include the fact that many think he became involved in heroin before he died. Join Facts First as we explore what happened to ACDC's Bon Scott on his final night alive. With Bon Scott as its frontman, the Australian heavy metal group ACDC became an underground sensation thanks to albums like Dirty Deeds Done Dirt Cheap and Highway to Hell. Though the band was known predominantly amongst rock fanatics during the 70s, it found unprecedented crossover success with the release of 1980's Back in Black. Sadly, by the time this album was released, Bon Scott was no longer alive. Back in Black was released in July of 1980, while Bond had passed away in February of the same year. Not wanting to miss out on their rising success, the group kept on working and found a new singer as soon as Bond passed away. Bond had been the lyricist for the band as well as its singer, which meant the replacement would have some seriously big shoes to fill. The band ended up settling on Brian Johnson as Bond's replacement. The songs on Back in Black, including the titular hit and the equally successful You Shook Me All Night Long, were attributed to the new songwriting team of Brian, Malcolm Young, and Angus Young. Guitarist Malcolm and Angus are two of the founding members of the group, having founded it in November of 1973, alongside drummer Phil Rudd and bassist Cliff Williams, as well as original vocalist Dave Evans. Dave was soon replaced with Bon Scott, solidifying the lineup that the band found success with. Although Back in Black was a crossover success for ACDC that rocketed the band to new heights, the success was bittersweet in multiple ways. For one thing, Bond wasn't around to see it. For another thing, their newfound celebrity turned off many hardcore fans of the group. Finally, there was the fact that the band was simply no longer the same one that had made such definitive heavy metal albums like Highway to Hell. Though Brian Johnson's more polished voice works better with mainstream listeners, it has never had Bond's authentic edge. This video is brought to you by Shaker and Spoon. Shaker and Spoon is a monthly cocktail subscription box that delivers the craft cocktail experience right to your front door. Each month, you'll receive a box with three unique recipes in them. You'll get to try out different liquors and quality ingredients without having to individually purchase all of the items. I ordered the Begin Again box, which features gin-based cocktail recipes. I was really impressed by the quality of the ingredients, which ranged from fresh rosebuds to delicious syrups and garnishes. The first recipe I tried was for a cocktail called Play It Cool. The recipe card was super easy to follow, and it's without a doubt one of the most delicious cocktails I've ever made at home. So if you're interested in delicious, complex drinks made simple and delivered to your front door, check out Shaker & Spoon today. If you click the link below and use the code FAXVERSE at checkout, or go to shakerandspoon.com slash FAXVERSE, you can get $20 off of your first box. Was Bon into heavier things than alcohol? By all accounts, Bon Scott was a man who loved to party. He partied as hard as he could, and his opportunities for that greatly increased when ACDC started finding underground success. In the months leading to his death, the singer was said to have been at his worst as far as alcohol was concerned. But until recently, not much has been discussed about whether or not the rock and roll frontman was also dabbling in hard drugs. Bond's death was originally attributed solely to alcoholism, but there's evidence to suggest that not only was Bond also dabbling in heroin, but heroin may have been the predominant cause of his death. In February of 1980, the singer was found passed out in his car by a friend. The friend tried unsuccessfully to wake the musician up, at which point he put a blanket on him and went inside to sleep. When the friend went outside of the car the next morning, Bond was no longer alive. Within only two days of the incident, the singer's cause of death was established to be acute alcohol poisoning. On his death certificate, the cause was listed as death by misadventure so as to give the singer some dignity. Bond certainly drank a lot, and drinking certainly kills people. Because of this, it was easy to believe the story of the singer passing away simply from alcohol poisoning. Though some still believe that Bon Scott died of alcohol poisoning alone, most have come to accept that the singer was most likely dabbling in harder things than booze. Before we tell you more, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Will this revelation harm Bon Scott's legacy? Some ACDC fans may be surprised to learn about the rumors of Bon Scott dabbling in heroin. 
There are many who believe that what killed the rock and roll singer wasn't alcohol poisoning, but was instead a heroin overdose. Several people experienced with the drug have come out and expressed that the circumstances of the singer's passing seem more indicative of a heroin-related death than an alcohol-related one. In most cases, clearing up the matter of whether or not Bond was on heroin at the time of his death would be as easy as looking at the toxicology report. But in Bond's case, there was none. The reason the singer's cause of death was announced so fast was that minimal investigation took place. No one bothered to see what substances were in Bond's bloodstream because it was obvious enough he'd been drinking heavily. Since booze is toxic enough on its own, those in charge felt they didn't need to add another cause to the list. Besides this discrepancy, some have also taken issue with the fact that Bond's address is incorrectly listed on his death certificate. They believe this provides evidence that the case was handled ineptly. Given how much Bond liked to party, it's not all that much of a stretch to believe the singer became involved in heroin. But there are many fans who flat out refuse to believe their idols would have gone that far. The revelation of the singer's possible heroin use isn't the only posthumous revelation that has changed the way some people view both him and ACDC in general. There's also the fact that many now believe Bond made uncredited lyrical contributions to Back in Black. Did Bon Scott write the lyrics for the album Back in Black? Bond wasn't credited as a lyricist on the album. The lyrics were credited to the late singer's replacement, Brian Johnson. However, numerous ex-girlfriends of Bond have come out of the woodwork with claims that the singer wrote at least some of the lyrics to the album, if not all. One girlfriend alleges that Bond quoted lyrics that would end up featuring in the song You Shook Me All Night Long to her before his death. The girlfriend also says the song includes references to a horse she had at the time. That horse's name was Double Time, and this phrase is used in the song. The ex-girlfriend alleging this is named Holly X. Meanwhile, there's also another ex-girlfriend of the rock and roll legend that claims she saw evidence before Bond's death that the singer had played a part in the writing of Back in Black. This girlfriend, named Silver Smith, says she received letters from Bond all the way back in the mid-70s that included snippets of lyrics that ended up being featured on Back in Black. Though many ACDC fans are now fully convinced that Bond played a major part in the writing of Back in Black, the album's writing is still attributed to Brian Johnson and the Young Brothers. The band still performs today, though there have been points recently where Angus Young and original bassist Cliff Williams have been the only notable members of the group on stage. Malcolm Young has suffered his share of health crises over the years, and these have often necessitated breaks in performing. The same can be said for Brian Johnson. During one occasion where Angus and Cliff had to go it alone under the ACDC moniker, they brought in a high-profile guest in the form of Axl Rose. Original drummer Phil Rudd is no longer with the band due to legal issues. It seems the rock and roll drummer threatened to kill someone, leaving him unable to perform with the group. There are numerous things that have changed since ACDC was an underground heavy metal sensation and many consider the group's greatest material to be found on the Bon Scott era albums. But there's something to be said for the fact that the band continues to chug along today. Now it's time to hear from you. Do you think Bon Scott contributed lyrics to Back in Black? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.